Hi, I'm Chris Haig and this is the Fiddle Channel and today we're going to play Michael Jackson's Billie Jean. This was a request from Gabriella, and uh, she wanted to play this on her looper. And I think really was mainly interested in the opening lick, uh, which is a really good one. Uh, it's from this is from the 1983 single by Michael Jackson's Thriller, which was the best-selling album of all time. So not to be sneered at. Um, it's got one of the great bass lines, and I think this is one of the best pop songs that ever there was. Uh, there's a, a video by James Hill playing the ukulele and he manages to uh, play the opening bass riff and the chords uh, together and that's a quarter of a million views so I have some ambition for this video <laughs> that some fiddlers will be interested. I'm going to show you what you might do with a looper and also what you might do if you were playing this with a covers band or maybe with a backing track. So we're going to look at all of the different sections, that bass riff, the chords at the beginning, uh, some chopping and the melody and how to play the solo if you get a solo and uh, some of the filling lines towards the end. So lots to go at. The introductory melody uh, actually works pretty well on, the, on pizzicato. Works well like that because it's a very percussive kind of sound and the um, pizzicato helps to do that pretty well. But I don't think you'd want to do that for very far. Incidentally we're in the key of F sharp minor which is the original key. Doing the same thing with Boeing. I think it's quite important how you actually bow it. So we write down at the heel and every bow is kind of bouncing. I can't really describe exactly what I'm doing but every bow is coming off and you're giving it quite a lot of grit so we got quite a maybe a quarter of an inch of, uh, of digging into the bow. So on the original we have two bars of drums before that and if you were uh, doing a looper, then I think you would want to start with some chopping. So the, um, the, the, the rhythm on the drums is a straight offbeat. Let me just play that along with the, just the drums at the beginning. So this is a simple chopping pattern, one of the simplest patterns and I'm actually going to do a video on Patreon on exactly how to do this. It's, uh, it's four sounds, uh, on, off, on, off, on, off, on, off and the third sound is the chop, the forward aggressive chop. The rest of it is just kind of placekeeping. So as I say if you're doing a looper then that's I think the first thing you should put down. Uh, one online version that I saw of this with the fiddle has, has the triplets uh, as the chop. One, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. I don't think that works as well myself, but that's another alternative. So, ha uh, having done the chop, then you would do the bass line. Then we have the chords. And uh, there's a couple of ways of playing those chords. The simple way, and the way that I recommend, is... So we've got F sharp over A, G sharp over B, that's third finger over second finger, and then fourth finger A over C sharp. So 
So that gives you two of the notes of the chord. Um, they're not actually the best two notes, but they're certainly the easiest. An alternative is um, is that which is more accurate because it gives it gives a closer representation of what's actually happening on the strings at the beginning. So you can either finger that one over two in second position to two over three, and then slide up half a position which I think is pretty hard uh, I think the easiest way is 2 over 3 and then move that up uh, 1 position and then half a position that gives you the, the note on the top is the most important note of that chord let's just hear the intro and the riff and that bit together fun bit and we try and combine all three of those. So we're going to um, that's combining the bass riff with the chop and obviously doing that we're actually losing a couple of the notes of the bass riff but your, your brain kind of fills them in and you imagine that you're hearing them. Now adding the, um, the chords decide that that's as far as you want to go <laughs> and pretty reasonably. I gave a lesson to Gabriella on this and I think she decided at that point that she would come back to me possibly after several months of practicing. <laughs> um, it may be that you will master this within a matter of minutes but I suspect this may take quite a while especially if you're not used to chopping. Um, but if you want to proceed and do the whole thing as a cover then the next thing you have to decide is what to do on the when it changes to B minor when we have the, the whole riff is moved up just for two bars, twice around that and then it's back uh, so uh, if you're playing the riff over the over the whole sequence then and that would be if you were playing with a band let's say then uh, that's what you would do um, follow mostly the bass line moving up and down again uh, if you're doing this as a solo and you're going to do the melody yourself then you don't want to do the riff after the intro very much at all and you want to go first of all into the whole melody of the verse and chorus and that's what we're going to do next. Here we go. One, two, three, four.
Okay, so I was following reasonably closely what the vocal line does, but I don't think you need to be too uh, worried about the individual notes and the syncopation. So you can make of it pretty well what you want, but don't get lost because it's uh, it's quite easy to miss some of the little tags here and there. Um, so that's how I would approach that. You do have some little gaps and um, I think it'd be good not to try and do the bass line in those gaps but to do a little bit of improvisation and we're going to do a solo in a minute and the solo works very well all the way through on the F sharp minor blues scale so what I'm going to do now is to play the melody again but this time in all of those gaps I'm just going to fill them with little bits of improvisation on that scale <laughs> So you can see that that fits really well it, uh, when you go to the B minor chord and when you go to the D major chord, it makes no difference, it fits perfectly well over all of those. And uh, I'll show you a solo now where I do the same thing but without the melody. And uh, you don't really have to worry very much about where the melody is going, uh, except when you get to the end, when you <laughs> if you have to get back into it then you're going to be in a real panic. But uh, yeah, let me show you that solo. If you're not sure about what comprises a minor blues scale, then I do have a video explaining all about that. Uh, finally, let's have a look at the final time round the verse. We have some interesting little licks, uh, guitar licks. There's this one. Which leads to the... Which leads to this really nice string line. So to play that you have to be in second position, get your first finger on the C natural, octave up to the fourth finger, and then it's 4-2, four, 4-2-1, two, four, two, 
and a trill on the C. And uh, the counting note is important, so it's uh, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one. Like that. So it's uh, one uh, um, half a beat before you come in with that lick. Uh, so, um, as I say, I will do a separate video on Patreon for how to do the chopping at the beginning of this and that will just be a pretty basic introduction to chopping. I do have another video on chopping which is much more complex which you might also be interested. I will send a PDF of all of these dots to anyone who subscribes and would like them and gets in touch with email and um, I'll play you out with... Um, uh, of various bits through the tune. Thank you for watching, I hope I'll see you again soon.